Pakistanis threatened the country with nuclear war. This tweet from their defense minister, quote, presuming PAC, of course referring to Pakistan's role in Syria against Daesh, another word for ISIS, Israel forgets Pakistan is a nuclear state too. Evidently, the Pakistanis were responding to a fake news story made up on the internet. So let's bring in Judy Miller, because this alarming story came about over the weekend, and she joins us now. Judy, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, and Merry Christmas to all, and Happy Hanukkah. Well, we've been talking a lot about Israel over the past, I don't know, three, four days. This tweet came out. It was a fake news story posted on AWD. We saw the, uh, we saw the Israelis react and say, listen, this was, this was a fake news story, and they, they sort of left it at that. But what, what does this tell you about uh, the effect that we're seeing on the Internet when these fake news stories come up? And it's really inciting uh, at a time when temperatures are already pretty high. Exactly. And it indicates that fake news really does have consequences. And in this case, when you're talking about two nuclearized nations, you're talking about potentially severe consequences. Now, Defense Minister Asif of Pakistan did not know that this was a fake news story. But one would have thought that his ministry, someone in his government, might have checked it out before he rep re rep replied in this extraordinary tweet. Especially because the Israelis then replied to in a tweet. By right, the way. and it was retweeted thousands of times. And in fact, I just checked online; right. it's still up. It has not been removed. <laughs> so it's not like it just gets deleted with a delete of 140 characters. So we're seeing no. this new world where we're almost as if policy is being made on Twitter on a number of occasions. Exactly. And, you know, this is really serious stuff because what most people don't realize that is that even our nuclear arsenal, some of it is still on a kind of very hair trigger alert. And that is that, you know, someone can make a terrible mistake and you can have a world crisis actually sparked by fake news. It's kind of hard to imagine, but we've just seen an example of kind of reckless talk that can quickly escalate into reckless action. Speaking of escalation, we had uh, David Keyes on just earlier as you listened as he spoke with Leland, and he, he said, I quote, that the UN uh, abstention on Friday was an abandonment of Israel, an ally. What's your reaction to that, especially when you heard the news on Friday? I'll tell you, I was really shocked that President Obama has chosen the last days of his administration to single-handedly change what has been long-standing American policy in the Middle East, and that is that we do not condemn settlements because we do not opine on whether or not they are le legal or illegal. That issue was last discussed internally in the United States in a, in a formal way under Lyndon Baines Johnson. And since then, we have taken the position, we have to not taken a position on the legality or illegality of the settlements. That is something that is supposed to be negotiated by the parties. And so for President Obama, to hand President Trump, as he comes into office, a major flare-up between Israelis and Palestinians and Israelis and the Arabs over the status of settlements does the incoming president no service, and it does the country no service, and it does the peace process no service. So I'm very disappointed in President Obama's action, no matter how you feel about the settlements, right. no matter how you feel about what the Israelis are doing on disputed Palestinian well, yeah, and, and you're Israeli hearing that territory. from both sides of the aisles. I do want to get uh, in one additional topic with you, especially uh, right. in the aftermath of the Berlin terror attack. We've seen sort of a populist shift, um, and we can note Brexit as one of them. Um, but what do you think the future is for Angela Merkel, especially um, after the most recent attacks in Berlin? Well, she is without a doubt the most talented and I think one of the great inspired leaders of Europe at a time when Europe really cries out for leadership. And this has severely complicated her governing prospects, her ruling prospects. As she has indicated, all indications are that she will run, but I must say to have this kind of event when she was such a strong proponent of permitting a million people into her country, which as Germany is something that one, one would expect Germany to do given its history, 
this has so backfired on her politically. But more than that, Liz, it has raised real questions about something called the Schengen Agreement, which is the principle of free movement within Europe uh, among the member states. I mean, how this terrorist was able to go in five years from uh, six jails in Sicily right. f from Italy to Germany and that neither country could deport him because he didn't have papers suggests that there are real gaps in the national security defense mechanisms, yes. not only of each of these individual countries, but of the EU. Yes. And I think you can say goodbye to the Schengen Agreement. That's one of the pillars of the EU. So it's more pressure, not only for Ms. Merkel personally, yes. but for the EU in general. Right, and he traveled all the way through France, and then he was apprehended on a, a, a traffic violation. So Absolutely. Some huge to, points. To Italy. To Italy, where he was, where he was shot, and they didn't even recognize whom they had pulled over uh, before they shot him. Well, Judy Miller, thank you so much for joining us, covering a whole range of topics this morning. Merry Christmas! Thank you so <laughs> thank much. Thank you.